Two ball clubs, one division. Indians on the road as Cleveland goes up against the Chicago White Sox. Live here on 2K Sports. Thanks for tuning in. 2K Sports presents Major League Baseball. Steve Phillips, John Crunk, myself, Gary Thorne. Season coming to a close. The American League Central represented by the White Sox and the Cleveland Indians. A very happy bunch of Chicago fans. These on the south side cheering for the Sox. Starting pitcher John Danks. Steve will be watching how he approaches this Cleveland lineup. As a manager, you send John Danks out there, you know you're going to get some competitiveness. You know you're going to get a guy with some presence who can handle a jam. But it's going to get to the sixth and seventh inning when his pitch count gets up. You're going to face a tough decision. Do you leave him in or do you go to the bullpen? Lineup for the Indians. We'll take a look, courtesy of Pepsi. Scouting report, John. How about some picks? Well, Johnny Peralta is a great hitter. He has power. He can break. And Grady signs more up. Will you wait the first pitch? Center fielder, number 24, Grady Sizemore. There's a strike from Danks, now 0 and 1. Now the Indians losing that last game. In a three game series after you drop those first two, now is the time against the White Sox. Creedy. Over to Canerco. One away. Now a quick look for this game with the White Sox and how they are positioned in the field. And uh, Steve, individual factors out there. Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. The pitch. That's low. Cabrera not going. See if he can't continue what he did last night when he picked up a couple hits. Foul fastball. Now the count one and two. And as Dribble Cabrera swings and misses, strike three. For two strikes, the hitter wanted the fastball. He got it, but didn't do anything with it. It's going to be Laporta now. Base is empty with two outs. That's a good pitch from Danks. It's in there. If the hitter pulls the trigger on this, he's got a chance to drive the ball. He opened up, was out in front, but the inside changeup can be dangerous. Change up, takes it for a called third strike. That's going to end the inning. So John Danks gets some three up, three down. He gets through the first inning without allowing a hit. And the White Sox, their first chance is coming. And out of the mound, we'll see Aaron Laffey. Cleveland's got him starting in this. And uh, as he looks at this White Sox lineup, what are they going to see from him today? Well, the one thing about Aaron Laffey we know is he's a competitor. He doesn't have overpowering stuff, but he does have the courage to throw it over the plate. But in the past, base on balls have haunted him. He needs to throw more strikes to be effective. And it's Johnny Damon now. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops in run scored, top five. Lineup for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. So who are you looking at, John? Well, the potential there for Alex Rios to be a productive hitter. So let's see if he can provide some offense for his team today because they're going to need it. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. Right there in the top five in home runs. He deals. Swing and a rocket towards short. And Cabrera gloves that one. Here's a look at the defensive alignment for the drive. Scouting these fielders, Number Steve. Oh, well, Drupal Cabrera has great versatility up the middle. It doesn't matter where you play him. He has great range and instincts and the ability to be able to throw from any position on the field. And it's Paul Canerco now. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. And it's in there that hitting streak continues. Now the State Farm leaderboard, the batter stacking up with hits this month. Right fielder. Number 20. Carlos Quinton. So Carlos Quinton comes up here with two runners on, leading the MLB in batting average. Swing and a miss on the cutter. 0 and 1. Here's the pitch. There's the swing. This one blasted high, deep center field. Say goodbye. A three-run home. 
bingo, just like that. It is three to nothing. Wow, a three-run shot. The first runs we've gotten on the board. Well, that's what you want. Run support for your pitching and attack the opposition. That's what the White Sox are doing right here. Hit hard down the right field side as he retreats back for it and gets the out. So Alex Rios to try and keep it going. One of the best batting averages in the league. Line towards first. And another hit. They're really gunning right now. And he ends up at second. That's a double. Just a solid offensive player day in and day out. The guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. Cast to drive and a run, A.J. Pierzynski. Swing and a hot shot. He caught it. Oh, that was headed right for the pitcher. Good, quick reaction. He got it. That's some kind of play by the pitcher right there. You release the ball. You think. Looking at some runs right from the get go. And leading it off, Shinsu Chu. Shinsu Chu. Danks gets him to swing and miss for a strike. Well, this one here with no doubt about it. The late break on that slider. I mean, what a devastating pitch, and the hitter just couldn't catch up. Here's the pitch. Ground ball, Creedy. And that one is through. That's their first hit of the game. That's going to bring up Johnny Peralta. And now I've got a moment to see how the Indians are doing rank-wise in the American League. Fifth in triples. Sixth in batting average with runners in scoring position. And they're in the top ten in runs scored. That offense Great relentless, ball. putting up runs and giving themselves a chance to win. With good speed now. It a swing line to left center. And it's through. Credit Peralta, base hit. Now Cleveland, well, here's Cleveland the chance Indians. they won. Second base. They tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steven, looked like he might have been guessing down there. And I tell you what, you have to make contact behind him the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and took advantage of it. Now 0-2, Dax with some pitches to play with. Well, his timing is just off right now. He swung way late on that cutter. That looks like a single. The opportunity for offense is right now. Designated hitter. Well, now he's surrendered three straight hits. He's got to bounce back and get this guy. He needs an out. Danks gets set and delivers. And that's in there for a strike. Well, he hangs this breaking ball and throws it up and in. The hitter gives up on it, doesn't even off. Catcher can't control it. And they score him. Can't get him. The run scores on the error. Well, he boot that one, and obviously leading to a run scored right there. So you can't make those kind of mistakes and still win ball games. Swing and a foul straight back. Strike three called on the fastball. Not much movement to speak of at just 88 miles per hour. And it's Crow at the plate. Uh, he's coming off the game last night where he had two big hits, and looks like he's starting to get locked in a little bit. That's at the knees for a called strike. Hitting just 217 lifetime off the White Sox. Called strike outside corner. Quickly in the hole now, 0-2. Well, they set up down and away. They throw it down and away. That's how you can be effective as a major league pitcher. And Peralta comes in to score. And that's two runs in. For the Cleveland Boy, the continuation here of this offense is called big time momentum. Pepsi brings us a look at the win expectation change for those two RBIs. It's going to be Rice now. So needing to get back. Swung on, line softly towards center. And it's through. That's a base hit. The runner's coming around second on his way to third. Gets in there in time. He is safe at third. Cleveland continuing to deliver big offense. Grady Sizemore at the plate. And he's in the top ten in the league and runs. And they've asked for a time out here, and the pitching coach is on his way out to the mound. Well, they've got to be considering a change right here. Time for a little heart-to-heart -heart and get a sense of where this pitcher is. And he starts Sizemore out. Fastball just misses. 1-0. Here's Danks with a 1-0 pitch. Lost the grip on that cutter, and it's a 2-0 count. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right center. 
And it's going to be Quentin. Here comes the runner for the plate. And that will score the run tie broken. They've got the lead. The runners in scoring position, you need to do something to get them in. He didn't have to get a hit. He knew all he had to do was find a way to keep it in play and pick up an RBI. And Cabrera settles in. And with the lead, this lineup looks as though they're ready to do some more damage. Uh, still a ways to go, but pitching's going to catch up here. Uh, that was a good piece of hitting right there. He got his pitch, took advantage of it, drove it, picked up the run. This one's going to be fielded by Ramirez. And that's the third out. That'll do it. John Danks laboring for this one. Offensive explosion. Four spots, second in. And it's Joe Creedy now. Hot shot towards the hole. So Jim Tomey coming up. State Farm takes a look at the highest batting average over the last 10 games. All these guys have a similar trait, that ability to put the good part of the bat on the ball and make solid contact on a consistent basis. And they're willing to hit from line to line, not just being full hit. And for RBIs, he's one of the best in the league. Not a lot of room left on the schedule as we look at the Central Division race brought to you by State Farm. First place, the White Sox. Second place, the Royals. In third, the Indians. Twins are fourth. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Well, Indians kind of doing a repeat performance from last year. You know, good effort on their part, but not quite the talent level to compete for a division title just yet. The pitch. Damon will foul that one away. Pitch on the way. Here's a swing and a line drive. And a foul ball. Strike three. Damon on a swing and a miss turned away. This one's right down the middle. He just swung and missed at it. Better check his back for a hole. And a runner on for Alexei Ramirez. Great season. Top ten in RBIs. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. Swings on that first pitch, misses the fastball, 0 and 1. Well, he's getting the job done this year, no question about it. Such production, so consistent. He makes it to second base. So that puts Paul Canerco at the plate. Just kind of lean in, Steve, and slap that thing the other way in that kind of pitch. Well, you can't pull that pitch. If you do, it's going to be a ground ball to short. You want to punch it to right field. He's one of the best at doing it. And he starts Canerco out. A line drive towards short. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. No runs in a couple of hits. Looking there at Manny Agri. And they're probably very happy to have that one run lead at this moment. Here's the first pitch. Really bad pitch right there to ball. And he takes a called strike to make it one and one. Uh, had some difficulty making contact in the game last night, striking out twice. Swing and a drive, deep left center. Damon. As he gets to it for the up. Now State Fire brings you this near photo finish, the American League wildcard race, as we draw to a close in the season. It's the Angels in first. In second place, the Yankees. Orioles third place. Fourth place, the Royals. It's the Blue Jays in fifth. And down at the bottom, the Texas Rangers. I've got such a great race right now for the wild card of the American League. And these teams are going to be playing playoff baseball all the way down to game 162, which has set them up nicely for playoff baseball. Now 0-2, Danks with some pitches to play with. The hitter's got to protect the outer part of the plate right here, down 0-2. Still 0-2. Danks gets set and delivers. Lines this one to the left side out of play. Well, with the way we keep track of pitch counts right now, you know 0-2, the pitcher wants to put him away. The fact that he has to throw another pitch just tells you how defensive a swing the hitter had to keep it going. So Chu is retired. 
Now credit the second baseman with a well-executed play right there. Comes up with the ball and quickly gets it from his glove to his throwing hand and throws him out at first. Here's the pitch to Peralta. Dax gets him to swing and miss for a strike. The key to a great changeup is deception and velocity change. He has both of those, and that's why it's so good. Back up. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. And nothing across here in this half of the inning. Indians four, the White Sox three. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. He homered earlier in the ball game. Well, they're trailing in this one, but not because of his at-bats. I mean, he's driven in runs, obviously hit the home run as well. So they're trailing, but not because of his production. And the first pitch. Swings and misses the good change right there on one. Now looking back to last night's game, a major contribution offensively and went deep. Nice job. Now swing and a shot towards second. One down. Here's a look at the teams that have gone the extra distance, courtesy of State Farm. The White Sox, number one. Second, the Blue Jays. Third spot, the Rangers. The Yankees, fourth. And at number five on the list, the Rays. Line shot into center field. And that is in there. The tying run is on base. So that brings Alex Rios to the plate. It's nice to get that runner on base with one out. Good piece of hitting that single. Now they got something to work with. And one of the league's most prolific hitters in the top five. And he starts Rios out. This is swung on, lifted to deep right field. It rolls all the way to the wall. The throw around third. He's going to try for it. And he comes home. That's it. We are tied. Well, the rally here energized every new opportunity they take advantage of. But Gary, he, he can really swing the bat. Just a quality approach at the plate, day in and day out. That consistency is critical to their success. See how much that triple adds to the win expectancy, our Pepsi WPA graph. Well, I was already to mark this down on the card as a double. Put another line in there. Well, he didn't let up at all, Gary. Great effort on his part. Took a chance, but he made it. Amazing thing is, he was able to do it standing up. Chance to drive it around A.J. Pierzynski. So needing to get back into this game, get it even. They've done that. Now they're trying to add to it. Gary, that was a big at bat right there. Coming up and bringing it back even here early on. Nice job. That's all it took, and that brings us to that proverbial brand new ball game. And he steps on first. That's the second out. He comes in to score, and they're going to get the lead. Well, this is a list of hitters that strikes fear in the opposition pitching. They have to because they know with one swing of the bat, they can change the score of the game. Base is empty and two down. Here's the delivery. That one swung on, hit in the air to deep right center field. That'll do it as they put that one away. They pick up a couple of runs on two hits. They strand no one. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. It's a nice day here. A little bit on the chilly side, but certainly not enough to detract from the game. And here's the first one. Danks gets him to swing and miss for a strike. Boy, that good late movement down, that cut fastball, unbelievable action on that pitch. Hit sharply towards the hole. And so Valbuena is retired. There's a nice play at third. He understands he's got a lot of time to catch it, then come up throwing. Nice job. And Przinski calls for the pitch. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. I think the hitter was looking for something out over the plate that he could drive. They pounded a fastball down and in. First strike. Ball. Lays off the cutter. Good pitch, but it's one and one. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. Over to Canerco. That's the second out of the inning. And it's Crow at the plate. He had a two-run single in his last appearance. Well, he's already driven in a couple runs in this one, Gary. you got to believe they're going to pitch him a little bit more carefully this time around. And here's the first one. Swung on, hit in the air to right center. This one into the gap, rolling towards the wall. He's going to try to stretch it. He wants to go to third. 
now is coming to bat. Well, the one thing you never want to do is make the last out at third base to end an inning, but he was able to get in there with that great speed just in time. And the first pitch swung on and hit. It's going to be Quentin, and it falls in there. Indians to pick up a run. A good pitch down Indian. low, Steve, but a better at bat. Well, he did a real nice job going down in his swing to get that low ball, be able to pick up the hit. Runner on first, two away. That's a good pitch from Danks. It's in there. For that good running action on that cut fastball, you think you're going to center it at the heart of the plate. It just moves off to the court. Oh, and he takes off for second. Line drive fouled off towards first. And another foul ball. Well, you can tell right there that the batter is in protection mode. Anything close, he's just trying to put it in play. The fact ball. that he fouled it off will keep this at bat going. The pitch. Yeah, Grady Sizemore strikes out, couldn't make contact. So they score once on two hits, one man left. We've got a stalemate going here in Chicago. And Jim Tomei to lead it off. 0 for 1 thus far. Number 27. Tomei gets in. Here's the first delivery. There's a swing and a drive. Deep right field. It's back towards the wall, and he still puts it away. They followed the advance scout reports to a T. They played the outfielders back that time, and he hit it right into the teeth of the defense. It's Damon at the plate. What a year for him. Top five in homers. That's going to one hop off the wall. There's the throw. Here are the lineups, the highest on base percentage for the past 10. Brought to you by State Farm. The White Sox, number one. The Twins in second. The Orioles, third. Fourth, the Jays. And we've got the Rangers. They are fifth. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. He's got one of the best averages in the American League. On the way. This ball is hammered deep right. Bounces up against the wall. The throw. And Damon crosses the plate. Well, the rally here energized every new opportunity. They take advantage of it. Oh, he's having some kind of offensive season here. Really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. And he starts Canerco out. That ball is belted deep to left center field. Ball is on its way. A little distance now, increasing their lead one to three. Uh, White Sox lead it's standing here, Gary. They just keep getting big hits. Number 20. One out, bases in. First pitch to Quinton. There's a swing, line drive, center field. That's two gone. And Beckham's in the box. He's got a 292 average when going up against the Indians. The pitch. Swings. Hits this one very high in the air. A soaring drive. Gone. Goodbye home run. Add one more to that lead. Fly ball out of here. Four up. This one in the alley in left center field, and everybody's watching it fly out of the park. The crowd is celebrating. There is a sweet spot on the bat, and that's where that ball hit. Now coming up. Uh, Gary, this offense has just been in control right here. Extending the lead, going to make it much more difficult to catch him later. And he starts Rios out. Took something off, and it swung on and missed. 0-1. Steve, they're starting to run away here, even though it's early in the ball game. Uh, the offense putting a smash to first, Laporta, and he'll step on first to retire the side, but not before they tally four times, thanks to two home runs in the inning. The White Sox leading.
And Cabrera settles in. Shortstop, number 13, Osbubal Cabrera. The first pitch. There's a strike from Danks, now 0 and 1. Here's the pitch. And that's a strike as Drupal Cabrera is going to have to take a defensive stance here. This is the go to pitch for many pitchers in the major league. The fastball down and away. When in doubt, that's where you go. Damon able to pull that one in. And that's one away. It's going to be Laporta now. There's a strike from Danks, now 0 and 1. He's just popping that glove with that four seam fastball. Pound in the strike zone. Good movement to that cutter, and he's in the hole now, 0 and 2. Fastball got him two down. Struck him out on three pitches. That gets it done in a hurry. Efficient and in control. When you have those two things working for you, you're going to get it done. Chew into the batter's box. He's in his sixth season. First pitch, here it comes. And he watches a cut fastball to start the at bat for strike one. Let's see if he shows a little more discipline at the plate tonight. Struck out twice in that game yesterday. Just expanded the strike zone. He's got to get more focused. And it holds at 0 2. Danks gets set and delivers. Back up. And that is not in time. He's aboard at first. It's going to bring up Johnny Peralta. Well, that pitch down and away is the toughest in the game to hit. It's a perfect pitch from the pitcher. Great piece of hitting. And keep that in mind next time around. We'll see whether or not he changes up on how he throws for this guy. And it's 0-2. Johnny Peralta. He'll be swinging anything close. Here's a swing. A soft liner to the left side. And it gets down. That's hit number two. Making good contact. Now Cleveland, here's the chance they won. Nice two-strike approach by the hitter. A high pitch up in the zone. Able to fight it off and make contact and put it in play. Taps this one foul off to the left. He watches the 1-1 one -one pitch, takes a fastball, strike two. Now that he's gotten the four-seamer down and in, oh. look for him to go outside now. Danks gets set and delivers. Fastball swung on and missed, and the side's retired. So, no runs, two hits, and they strand two. White Sox nine, Indians five. It's going to be Brzezinski. He's a big home run guy, top ten in the league right now. Here's the first pitch. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. It's off the wall and a hop. He stops at second. That will be a double. He's in scoring position now with nobody else. He's getting it done all season long, Gary, and a the guy they're really looking to count on. Well, this is just a good piece of hitting right here. No out starting the inning, and you're on and you're put yourself in scoring position. That's big. And it's Joe Creed head up the middle, and it gets through. Not bad, two for three today. That's a great situation for some offense. Well, I guess we should have expected a good game from him. Two hits in his last game, and these two come during a terrific hitting streak. And as Jim told me in the box now. Now the game last night he took advantage of a mistake pitch and drove it out of the ballpark for a two run shot. Ball is blasted a long high drive deep to center field. Gone. Goodbye. A three run shot. They have not figured out a way how to shut down this White Sox offense today. They look so good. Number 18. Johnny. Damon. First pitch on the way to Damon. Line shot into center field. And another hit. They're really gunning right now. 
Here's a quick check of the home run leaders in the league brought to you by State Farm. That's a big time power hitters right here. Some guys that look to drive the ball out of the ballpark and swing hard in case they hit it. When they make contact, they can do some serious damage. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. His lifetime average, 261 off the Indians. That one's drilled to short. But just what his team needed, he continues to swing a great bat. Three hits from now in this ball game, and he's on with no outs. And Paul Canerco to bat. Now coming off of a game last night in which he had a home run, and good piece of hitting, a way to capitalize on those mistakes. Hard grounded a short. The second, there's one. And they get it. They turn two. And a great throw right there. Second base, strong yard. Arm strength critical. Turning the double play. It can be a matter of a split second to get the out. Great double play. Carlos Quinton at the plate with two away. But leading the league in home run. First pitch to Quinton. He swings down and really hit that. And that's going to do it. Sizemore is there. So they strike for three more runs here and widen that lead even further. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. It'll be the bottom third of the order coming to the plate. There's a look at Ozzy. Ozzy Guillen. Satisfied manager, I think, right now. He's got the ball club in a pretty good spot. That pitch is not going to be in there from Danks. Here's the 1 0. Second pitch waves at a fastball. Strike one. The 1 1 pitch. Line towards third and foul. He deals. Good cutter. Swung on and missed for the first down. I'm going to get another look here at that cutting fastball here on KK. Oh, a fantastic strikeout pitch here. It's headed down and in, and the batter just didn't time this thing right. He never had a chance on this one. Absolutely right, John. And as in real estate, it's all about location. And it's Crow at the plate. He's 0 for 3 for his career off John Danks. Looked like the cutter that time for a called strike. One and one. Well, if he can throw this cutter down and away like this, he's going to be very effective. That's an outstanding pitch. Swung on and ripped towards second. Over to Canerco. Out number two. Number 65. It's going to be Rice now. Singled home a run in his last at bat. First pitch on the way. Grounded up the middle. Beckham. Throws to first in time. That's three down. Save your arm. And Beckham's in the box. Had a home run in his last at bat. Number 15. Jordan Beckham. Swung on and missed 0 and 1. Now made good contact in the game last night with four hits and getting the good part of the bat to the ball. That strike's gonna run the count to 0 and 2 for Rivera. Well, anytime you recognize a slider, you gotta be very patient You're with out. it. You can't be over anxious. You gotta stay the back. Chicago and then when you see it good Center enough, fielder. let it fly. Number 51. Down on strikes there. Nice piece of pitching. And he starts Rios out. Hit hard down the right field side. This is a one hopper off the wall. Rios towards third base. There's the throw. And not in time. He's safe. A highlight real play right here. This is the head first attempt at third. Well, the quickest way between two points is a straight line. He goes diving directly into the bag to make it in there. And his manager will be happy because he at least was going to have a double. It's going to be Krasinski in the top ten and hits. The first pitch. Swings, hits this one very high in the air, deep left center, and bye bye. That's a two run homer. Pitch down and away, Steve. He found a way to go out and get it. Well, that's a pitcher's pitch. I mean, there's not much you can do there. That's an exceptional job of hitting. Not many guys can hit a home run on that one. Now, 
And it's Joe Creedy now. One out, nobody on. Here's the pitch. Laporta. And he steps on first. That's the second out. There's Jim Tomey at the plate. He had a three-run homer last time in the lineup. Oh, Gary, the team's ahead right now, and obviously his offensive production has been a major contribution here. Driving in runs with those at-bats, and obviously the big home run, so the power stroke coming along as well. Tomei gets in. Here's the first delivery. Ball hit very well, soaring into deep center field. Tell it goodbye. They add to the lead. Man, what a big day these guys are having. They have not figured out a way how to shut down this White Sox offense today. They look so good. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Hit hard on the ground to short. Throws on to first side is retired. But they strike for three runs here thanks to two home runs in the inning. Cleveland hoping for a big time turnaround. And Brady Sizemore up. Drove in a run earlier in the game. 24, Brady Sizemore. And he starts Sizemore out. Oh, Big what? breaker in the 0-0 pitch. It's a called strike. Well, Gary, with this big a lead here in the seventh inning, it's incumbent upon the pitcher to throw strikes. Get outs right now. Now 0-2, Danks with some pitches to play with. Sometimes you get a pitch, and if it's early enough in the count, you can just say, oh. not this one, I'm going to wait for the next one. Danks gets set and oh. delivers. Still 0-2. Well, with the way we keep track of pitch counts right now, you know 0-2, the pitcher wants to put him away. The fact that he has to throw another pitch just tells you how defensive a swing the hitter had to keep it going. Well, he showed him a great rhythm on the mound in that at bat. A great rhythm and a great sequence. He strikes him out on that fifth pitch, and he set him up perfectly. And here's the first one. Ground ball, Creedy. So Cabrera is set down. For the Cleveland Indians. Yeah, it's going to be Laporta now. Struck out swinging his last time up. Watches a fastball that's in there. 0 and 1. Well, it's getting late right now. Two outs here in the second. Shot towards the hole. And that's going to do it. Canerco's there. No runs, no hits. Nobody. And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. Not, Gary, I think oh, we're losing see. a little something here. I don't think this guy's nearly as solid defensively as the one he's replacing, so interesting move. This one finds its way around, rolling all the way to the wall. Ramirez is headed for third. He is safe at third base ahead of that play. Well, he was already to mark this down on the card as a double, put another line in there. Well, he didn't let up at all, Gary. Great effort on his part. Took a chance, but he made it. Amazing thing is he was able to do it standing up. With a run 90 away, here is Paul Canerco. And a home run back in the fourth inning. And he starts Canerco out. Takes a swing at that fastball. Can't connect on one. Well, the two-seamer has his timing way off. He swung and missed. Swung way too early. Lined up the middle. And it's through. Canerco brings him home. Talking about a guy who's swinging a pretty hot bat right now. His third hit of this ball game, and it comes with nobody out in the inning. Cut on and missed on one. Rivera with a delivery. And Quentin watches that one go by, and the count is even. He has not hit well in this matchup. 188 against the Indians. Hot shot towards the hole. Now breaking down Carlos Quentin's season so far. Let's see how he stacks up compared to everybody else. First in batting average. First in batting average with runners in scoring position. He's also a hit machine, leading the league in hits right now. Swinging the bat well. Every time he puts it in play, he seems to find a hole. 
And the first pitch. And he gets this one by him on one. Well, that's a pretty good pitch right there. He got that slider in the strike zone. He got the hitter out in front to swing early. Lined hard deep down the right field side. It comes off the wall and right. Federico's going to try and score here. And Federico will score. Great hitting or poor pitching. I'm not sure which. He may be running out of gas, but he's got four straight hits against him. Not looking real good. And we've got Chris Perez out on the mound. He's coming on in relief for the Indians. And he gets going against these White Sox hitters. What do you think's in store? Good chance to look at a young arm right here in Chris Perez. Six foot four, 225 pounds, and a lot of power. Fastball in the high 90s. He can run it by some of the best fastball hitters in the game. They have not figured out a way how to shut down this White Sox offense today. They look so good. No outs and the base is empty. Now the first pitch. A shot up the middle. And again, this lineup right now on fire. That's going to bring Joe Greedy up. Which teams are leading the way in offense? Well, let's have a look. Our State Farm leaderboard. The White Sox, number one. The Yankees, second. Third spot, the Red Sox. Jays, fourth. And for the Orioles, they are fifth. Well, you talk about a high-octane offense. This team is number one in all of baseball in run score. And how do they do it? Any way you can imagine. Take the ball out of the ballpark. Yeah, they get that one done. Get on base, steal a base, and score on a single. Yeah, they'll do that, too. You name it, they do it. That's why they cross home plate better than anyone in baseball. Perez with the delivery. You're out. Swing and a miss on the slider. One up. The plate. The, the ability to move your pitches around within the zone, to change a hitter's eye level and keep them off balance are critical to success. Very successful there. Three pitches and a strikeout. Tomei gets in. Here's the first delivery. Swung on and missed. Strike one. Career, he's 0 for 1 off Chris Perez. Swing and a miss. Boy, that's some kind of fastball down in the zone right there. The hitter has to be ready for it or he's got no chance to hit it. You can't connect on that, Jim Tomei. Up empty on a swing. Well, K-Cam gives you a look. 85 miles per hour. Look at the break. Follow that break on that. Johnny Damon. First pitch on the way to Damon. Swings and misses at the fastball. 0-1. Oh, he just swung late on that one. That's what you call getting gassed up. Down the left field line. And it's in there. He continues to get on base. That's hit number four in this game. Time to look at our State Farm leaderboard. The players with the highest average with runners in scoring position. Our clutch hitters are hard to find. It means they have to maintain their focus and control their emotions and let the game come to them. And these guys clearly get that done. And Ramirez settles it. Swing, hot shot. And again, this lineup right now on fire. All right, he's got three quarters of the cycle covered, and the hardest one out of the way, that tough triple. Let's see if he can hit a home run to complete it. Two outs, bases loaded. Perez gets him to swing. That'll be missed and a strike. Well, you have to be ready for something hard, and this guy wasn't anticipating it. That's why he was late on that two-seam fastball. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. So they add five more to the total and widen that gap. Night Sox continue to run away with this ball game. And leading it off, Shinsu Chu. Two for three thus far. Shinsu Chu. And he starts Chew out. And it's fouled away. Foul! Danks gets set and delivers towards center field. And in there for a base now hit. Batting. He's three for, for four today. Indians. 
That's going to bring up Johnny Peralta. We talk about a guy who's swinging it right now as good as anybody. That's his third hit of the ball game thus far. Let's see if this can mount a rally with nobody out. Dave Bush going to the mound as the White Sox bring him in as a reliever. Well, it's not surprising they're going to the bullpen now. It's, I just thought maybe they waited a little bit too long. Should have gone and gotten him a little bit earlier. Uh, retiring Peralta. I thought they had a shot at a double play right there, but at least they got one out. But now a runner in scoring position at second base. Trinidad is the batter. Ball. Missed ball one. You know, Gary, with one out right here, they still have time in this inning to try to generate some runs. They need to score here in this eighth inning and not leave it all to the night. He takes a fastball for a strike. Now it's one and two. The hitter lays off this pitch realizing you can't do much when you get that kind of four seam fastball down and away it's tough to hit. Smashes that one towards the shortstop. That one gets through for a base hit. And Chu comes home. Cleveland continuing to deliver big offense. And maybe he wanted to waste that pitch. It just didn't get far enough away or up high. Well, it just it was still caught a little too much of the plate, and the batter took advantage of it. Good focus at the plate. That should be a base hit. Now, now batting, Cleveland, here's the chance they won. Steve, sometimes that pitch down the middle you want to drive. He chose to take it the other way. Well, good piece of hitting. You don't have to always pull that ball. You think up the middle at first and then adjust accordingly. Outstanding adjustment. It's now 0 and 1. Watch that fastball go by. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. And another one. It's contagious. And he's in there. Situations repeating themselves here. A chance to produce, and they are. He's tired. His pitches are starting to flatten out. Three straight hits. What more do you need to see before you give him the hook? One out with runners at first and second. The pitch from Bush. Right. Looks at one. That's in there for a strike. How oh, good life on this fastball as he just buries it. towards the middle. And he's got it. He's out. In time for the out. Too late and he is safe at second. No ball back to the pitcher. He's got to make a decision. He should have had his mind made up earlier. Instead he gets it out at first base. Now his work's cut out for him with two runners on in scoring position. Back up the middle, and Ramirez feels the ball. Out. Throws to first side, is retired. So they pick up four hits in the inning and two runs across. The Indians hoping they can somehow dig their way out of this one. And it's Carlos Quentin in the box now. Two hits, five trips to the plate. For it's nice to have a bat like this in the lineup because as you're going through the game, you know you've got a chance to score runs every time he comes to the plate. Hits it out of the ballpark. He's driving the ball. He's doing a little bit of everything. A strike to start the back half of the eighth here on one. There's a ball. Hit well. A high drive deep into center field. Gone. A home run. They add to the lead. Man, what a big day these guys are having. And Beckham's in the box. Empty bases. Three outs to go here. First pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike one. And Steve, uh, this is the point in the ball game where you are really putting it to the opposition. The long ball can do that to you. Well, there's no question. I mean, you give up those home runs, and it just deflates your own team. So, offense ruling the day. That one swung on, head in the air, deep to left field. He has to back up for it. Comes away with the out. Center fielder. One out. And Alex Rios at the plate. He's four for five in this game. Boy, good offensive production today. Some quality at bats, driving in runs, and then the power's coming out as well. And I'll tell you what, there's not a pitch he can't hit. Good pitch as he's late on that one. 0 and 1. Well, I tell you what, for two seam fastball, he had some good movement and good pop on that one. Batter swung late. Out of here. Goodbye, home run. What a big day these guys are having. And it'll be Jensen Lewis doing the pitching. He'll be the reliever for the Indians. 
John, he gets going here against these White Sox bats. What are you expecting? Well, a valuable asset to come out of your bullpen when your team is in a tough jam is bringing in a guy like Jensen Lewis. Here's a power pitcher who throws in the mid to upper 90s, but he has the ability to strike people out and challenge you with that fastball to get out of jams. As he retreats back for it and gets the up. Greedy into the batter's box. Two outs and nobody on. First pitch on the way. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch, 0 1. Well, just a little bit out in front of that fastball and that swing. Strike two. No balls, two strikes. Greedy. He'll lean in on that zone now. Now a swing and a ball hit high and deep, way back there at the warning track. They add to the lead. Man, what a big day these guys are having. They have not figured out a way how to shut down this White Sox offense today. They look so good. Two outs, bases empty. Tomei gets in. Here's the first delivery. And that's by him, 0 1. 0 1. Lewis kicks and delivers. Hit sharply towards the hole. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. But they strike for three runs here, all coming thanks to three solo homers. White Sox. There's Manny Act to the manager. He's reflecting right now. Not uh, likely a lot of positive reflections, however, in this game. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. He's been chosen to take over out there. Steve will be watching how he approaches this Cleveland lineup. Well, you take a look at this big body guy and Bobby Jenks out on the mound right here, and you know it's about power because of his size, but it's his off-speed pitches, the secondary pitches, the slider, the changeup, the curveball that make him overall effective. And it holds at 0-2. Here's another foul ball. Cabrera in this at bat working hard. Well, the pitcher did exactly what he wanted to do on that 0-2 count. He wanted him to swing the bat, and he did, but he just fouled it off. Great piece of hitting. You got him there. That was a nice strikeout. Well, this is where you want to go with two strikes on the hitter. You want to go down out of the zone. He swings through it, couldn't make contact with that one. It's going to be Laporta now. Batting 250 lifetime, 3 for 12 record against the White Sox. There's a swing and a miss at the fastball. It's one and two. Still one and two. One two from Jenks. But what you're looking for when you're behind in the count is you hope the pitcher makes a mistake. In this case, though, he didn't. He made a great pitch down in the strike zone. But give the hitter credit. He gets up on that bat a little bit, choking up, and keeps it in play to keep the at bat alive. And Laporte is retired. Now down to their final out right here, Gary. So made it looking pretty dire at this point. And, you know, but listen, funnier things have happened. They've got to get base runners, though. Swung on grounder. This You're might up. be it. And on to first for out number three. And that's going to do it. White Sox win this in a lopsided victory, a dominating performance, Gary. Now we've got highlights to show you. We award our Pepsi Clutch performer, the standout man on offense today, Carlos Quinn. Well, you know, Gary, watching him in batting practice today, you can tell that he was getting locked in, and he proved that in this one with a couple of bombs to provide all the offense his team needed for another solid win. That's how you make a statement. Steve, it seemed like they knew from the get-go they had it. This was going to be their day, and they were right. Uh, you and I like the close games just because there's a little more intrigue for all nine innings, but the hometown fans, they like the offensive explosion and the big win. I guess it's that time again. We wrap up this 2K Sports broadcast of MLB. For John, Steve, our entire 2K Sports crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Adieu, adieu.